Hello, this is Mary, and this is Dreamy Goat Design Studio's video on preparing the cochineal bug for dyeing with cochineal. And I, first of all, before I start, I want to thank you for being so patient. This is a two-month study group on cochineal and on matter, and darn it if it isn't halfway through the first month. And that's uh, my fault, but we are now going to get back on pace, and let's do it. Okay, let's start. This is going to be fun. Okay, the first thing is, let's take a look at the bug itself. Um, lots of little bugs. They are scale insects. They live on the Nopal cactus. Uh, they are primarily grown in Mexico and in Peru these days for uh, distribution. And they are lovely. Um, the deal is that these bugs um, differ from one source to another. And so if you were to go into Oaxaca, for example, and buy um, cochineal bugs from a weaver, she may be selling you her second or her uh, inferior bugs with less color, that is, because of course, understandably, she wants to keep the best bugs for herself. So if you're buying your bugs, know that um, from place to place, know that the uh, saturation of color, the intensity of color, may vary a bit. I buy mine from either Earth Hues or um, Botanical Gardens primarily, but I hear from botanical gardens these days that the bugs that Kathy Hattori is getting is so, um, is so saturated that you actually can, um, get to use less bug to get the same rich red and purple colors. Now, what I mean by that is that traditionally, over the years when I've taught, uh, taught when I've dyed with cochineal, I've always kind of used a standard rule of 25% weight of goods for the brightest, richest, darkest of reds and purples. But Kathy Hattori assures me that if you want your dark reds, you only have to use about 10% weight of goods of the bugs that she offers. Now, why am I telling you this? Because in the study group, I uh, offered to the group the 10% weight of goods bug. So just know that you don't have to use as much, but if you are not using Kathy Hattori's and botanical, color, uh, botanical colors bugs, you may want to up it to 25%. Okay, that was a long-winded way around, but let's see what we do regardless of the weight of goods. Well, we weigh it out, okay? Now this is going to be 22 grams, which means that I am going to be dying about 220 grams of fiber, which isn't very much. It's only about a half a pound, okay? Okay, so I grind it up, and I do this by putting it into a dedicated coffee grinder. Do not think you're going to wash this out and use, uh, use it to grind your coffee beans, because you will see how fine these bugs are. You will never get them out. So, grind them up. Of course, I would do it longer to get a finer grind. And by the way, if you don't have such a coffee bean grinder, then, but you do have a little, um, and it should be a miniature, a little mini Cuisinart, go ahead and use this. This will also give you a good grind, a very fine grind of bug. And isn't that strange to say it that way? Don't use the blender. This is my old funky blender that I use for dyeing purposes, uh, but don't use it because it will not grind the um, bugs as fine as you like, okay? All right, so we have them ground, and this is what they look like. Look at that just as fine as can be. There it is. And then we put it into a saucepan, not a big pan, okay? Because you're only going to be making small amounts for three times. You put it in, I'm not putting it in because it's already in here. And you add a pinch of tartaric acid. And I don't know what a pinch is, but to me that's about a pinch. You boil it bring it up to a boil, uh, kind of soft running boil, put the lid on, you boil it for 10 to 20 minutes, okay? 15, okay? When you're done with that, let it cool for just a little bit so the sediment of the ground bug kind of falls to the bottom of the saucepan. And then you need to decant it. Now this is just a jar that's holding my liquor and I've already done it once. You can see it down here. Normal directions say, use a cheesecloth and a strainer. And I have found if I use a cheesecloth and a strainer, the sediment sticks in the cheesecloth and I can't get it out 
of the cheesecloth uh, to use a second and a third and sometimes even a fourth time. So I have found if I can find a very fine mesh sieve, this comes from an Asian market, I believe it's used to skim oil. But if you look at how fine it is, see my hand? Compare it to this sieve. I don't know if you can see the difference or not, but this is, uh, even though this is considered a fine mesh, it's actually big enough to lose some of the uh, seeds. Uh, seeds, sorry, some of the, the bug through the holes. So let me show you what I do. You can, of course, use cheesecloth, but this is what works for me. I slowly pour it in, and look how red that is. That's the tartaric acid that shifted the uh, natural purple to red, because remember, when you add acid, you shift to orange. And notice I'm trying not to lose much of the bug sediment is all. You can see that there's, there it is in there. I'm going to not waste this. Remember, I'm always using distilled water. If I haven't said that before, I need to really stress it now. Distilled water is the key. Tap water or mineralized water. Uh, well, these little cochineal bugs are not happy. They don't want to um, bind or uh, uh, I guess the word is bind terribly well with the fiber when you use uh, just regular tap water. So use distilled at all times. Now, if you can come in a little closer, I want to show you something. This will be the third time I've decanted it. Decanted it, and notice how thin it is at this point. That's because I've gotten virtually all of the color out. I'm still going to do it one more time. I will boil it for the 15 minutes or thereabouts and then I will decant it one more time and then I have this lovely 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 red which will be added to the water in my dye pot. Now many um, people I think once they have the third decanting and that's this one right here many people will just go and die at that point but I'm old school and I learned to let it sit overnight so that's what I will do. And tomorrow when we do our next video, I'll show you how to uh, basically, um, uh, well, the next step of the first bath of dyeing. Now, this is another thing I do that I don't think are, is in directions anymore, but I do it anyway. When I'm all done with this baby, I'm just going to throw in all of the uh, sediment, the finely ground bug, into this pot, and I'm gonna let it sit overnight. Uh, like I said, not many people do that anymore, but I do. I still like to just let it sit as long as possible before I use it. Okay, I think I've covered everything. Um, I don't think there's anything I have forgotten. If there is, I'll try to catch it on, the, on tomorrow's video when we look at actually putting this into the dye pot and putting our first round of fibers into this beautiful, what will be a beautiful red dye bath. Okay, thank you. Bye.